Hello everyone, Deacon John Myers here with another in our series of Power Church software tutorials. Today we're going to look at setup accounting and what materials you'll need to collect before you start the process. So stay tuned. Before we start today's tutorial, if you haven't already, please take a second right now and subscribe to this YouTube channel, which you can do by clicking on the icon in the lower corner below. That way you'll know when new videos come out. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And now let's go over setup accounting and what materials you will need to collect beforehand for PowerChurch. When you're ready to install PowerChurch or do setup accounting, you're going to need about 60 minutes at least to do the process. And you're thinking to yourself, what material should I gather before I start this process? Well, I'm going to give you a list of things to look for. First of all, you'll need all of your bank account statements and the current balances. You'll also need any outstanding checks or deposits, and these won't be on the bank account statements because the bank won't know about them yet, so you have to find a list of those. You'll need all of your major assets, such as automobiles or buildings, and their current market values. You'll also need a list of any outstanding loans, such as car loans or the building mortgage. Once you've gathered all these things together, you're ready to start setup accounting in PowerChurch. So let's see how that looks inside the PowerChurch software. One of the first tasks you'll have to perform after installing PowerChurch is setting up the accounting module. This is done when you click on the accounting module, you're prompted to start the setup accounting wizard. Before going through the setup accounting wizard, you'll have to gather some information ahead of time, such as the beginning balances for your bank accounts, any beginning balances on loans or mortgages, and outstanding checks. All of the information can be entered also at a later time, with the exception of the outstanding checks, that is, checks that you've cut that have not yet cleared your bank. This will be the only opportunity to enter that information. You can take your time and read through the first four menus of the setup wizard. But first, let's talk about setting the first month for PowerChurch. If you have installed PowerChurch in the middle of the year, you can choose either to set the first month back to January, if you intend on entering all of the transactions for that year, or you can set the first month for the month that you installed PowerChurch. That's what this setting is for. You can also tell PowerChurch what is the beginning month of your fiscal year. That is, if your finances follow the calendar year, then set your accounting year to start in January. If, for example, you follow the school year, then start your accounting year to begin in July. Next, you will be prompted to set up your current assets. Current assets are cash or cash equivalents, such as bank accounts. PowerChurch requires that you have a primary checking account set up and the beginning balance. If you have any outstanding checks, for this account, now's the time to add them. Again, most of the information in the setup wizard can be entered at a later time, but outstanding checks have to be entered through the setup wizard. You can enter the date of the check. The reference is usually the check number, a description, and the amount. Do this for all of your outstanding checks. If you have other checking accounts besides your primary checking account, you can click on the Add button and enter the additional checking account in the same manner as your primary checking account, along with the outstanding checks or deposits. In the same manner, you can enter your savings accounts and money market accounts by clicking on the Add tab, naming the account, giving the current balance, and putting in any outstanding checks or deposits. Next, you enter any cash on hand, such as a cash drawer, by clicking on the Add, giving the account a name and the current balance. Next, enter any investment accounts if you have them, by clicking on the Add, giving the account a name and the current balance. Next, you're prompted to enter the beginning balance for your fixed assets, such as your land and building and furniture and equipment. If you have that information handy, you can enter it through the setup wizard, or you can wait, finish the setup wizard, 
and enter that information at a later time. The first screen is for land. This is not for building, that's the next screen. If you have land and you want to add it, click on Add, give the account a name, and the original cost. Next, you're prompted to enter the value of your buildings by clicking on Add and giving the asset a name. Power Church prompts you for the original cost. You may want to enter the original cost and then move it to market value by making an entry later after you're finished with a setup wizard, or you can enter the current market value at the time when you start Power Church. Next, you can enter your vehicles by clicking on Add, giving the account a name and the original cost. With vehicles, you'll probably want to enter the original cost. You'll have a chance to enter depreciation later. Equipment, you can enter your furniture and equipment by clicking on Add, giving each piece of equipment a name and the original cost. Again, the depreciation will be entered on a later screen. Next, you'll be asked to enter other assets, if you have any, that don't fit into the categories of the previous assets. Again, by clicking Add, giving the asset a name and a current balance. Next, you'll be prompted to enter your current liabilities. These are liabilities that you expect to pay off within a year, such as your payroll liabilities. If you have beginning balances for any of these liabilities, you can enter them now. More than likely, you will leave them at zero and begin to enter them as you use PowerChurch. Your long-term liabilities are things such as your mortgage or car loans, things that you won't pay off in one year. If you have any long-term liabilities, click Add, give the account a name, and the current balance. The contribution income with respect to starting balances are entered in the next set of screens. Typically, the contribution income balances start at zero, and you enter the contributions as a matter of course once you start using PowerChurch. The four types of contribution income, unrestricted, temporarily restricted, permanently restricted, and pass-through, will be covered in separate tutorials. For the purpose of the setup wizard, Typically, the startup balances are zero. When you've finished going through the Setup Assistant, click on Finish. You will come to this menu in the Setup Wizard, where you can go back and add new information or change the information that you've entered into any of the areas for current assets or fixed assets or liabilities. When you're finished with the Setup Wizard, click Complete the Accounting Setup.